Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Equityverse. Today, we're going to talk about the NASDAQ, and we're going to be looking at the Relative Strength Index, or RSI. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we often talk about crypto on this channel, but if occasionally we accidentally fall into a black hole and enter into a different universe. And in this instance, we have entered into the equity verse. Now, the reason we're talking about the NASDAQ and you know tech stocks in general is that there does seem to be a high level of correlation between Bitcoin and, and the NASDAQ. So what I wanted to do is, is you know provide some insight into, into where the NASDAQ is now and where it has been in the past. Now, recently, for the last several weeks, the NASDAQ has had a pretty brutal sell-off. Okay, and this is actually more or less coincided when Bitcoin also started to see a sell off back in, in mid November. And since then, the Nasdaq has actually pulled back almost 20%. Okay, so 20% moves to the downside in, say, stocks would be considered a bear market. So it's almost 20% down. But what I wanted to show is we want to look at the weekly relative strength index for the NASDAQ and compare it to prior corrections. Not to say that this is what has to happen this time, but just to show, look, this is what has happened in the past. All right. So one thing we can note is that down here, when we're looking at the at the NASDAQ, there have been you know, a few times in history when the weekly RSI has gotten to these levels or slightly below. The last time that we reached a level on the weekly RSI of approximately 35 was, you guessed it, back in March of 2020. Now, I think what's more interesting in looking at the RSI is looking to see how long it took to recover to, you know, back to being bullish. And you can see back in March of 2020, we recovered relatively quickly. If you go and you can see that right here on, on this capitulation. If you go back even further to say the end of 2018, we remember the stock market crashed at the end of 2018. We also know that crypto crashed at the end of 2018. A lot of these markets are actually a lot more correlated than we like to believe. You can see that this correction corresponded to a weekly RSI that is lower where, than where it currently is. But note that where it currently is was achieved by late November, and then we were fully turned around and heading back up just a month or two later. Okay, so while there was further downside to come, it only lasted for a couple more weeks. If you go back even further, we can see another sell-off by, by the NASDAQ in early 2016, uh, which corresponded to this move right here. And one of the interesting things is, while we did technically go slightly lower, we were still back in business just a few weeks later, and, and a few months later, we were putting in new all-time highs. You go back even further, we had yet another sell-off in the NASDAQ. And again, what you'll notice is that recoveries are, are pretty swift. They don't, they don't really take that long, historically speaking. Now, if you continue going back too far, we will we will get to this instance over here. But if you look at this one, we we didn't even reach the current level right here, and we saw a fairly swift recovery. You go back even further to August of 2011, we see the same story. You know, we 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 basically put in a bottom right around this level on the weekly RSI, and then started to started to trend back up, and in fact put in new all-time highs. So. This is what usually happens, right? So, so th th what usually happens is around the current RSI levels, we've either put in a bottom or we've gone slightly lower over a few more weeks and then we've recovered. And this is what's taken place for the better part of the last decade. But I should at least mention that there are exceptions, right? There does remain more downside risk and the downside risk would probably be um, in some of the macro conditions that we're facing, depending on what the Fed does. Now, I wanted to draw your attention to what happened back in 2008, because in fact, here, the weekly RSI hit this level back in September of 2008, but it did not stop it from dropping further and taking many months before the uptrend resumed. So while I would personally like to believe, and I'm actually more inclined to believe that the market will recover sooner rather than later. I would at least be somewhat remiss if I did not mention the downside risk. And the downside risk is going into a, a larger pullback and actually going into a bear market for the NASDAQ. Again, my guess is that we will, we will actually pull out of it like we tend to do. It seems like every time there is a major pullback in, you know, in the NASDAQ or in the S&P or just in markets in general, all of the bears 
uh, come out and say, I told you so, but just remember that they're usually saying the same thing every single year. And then anytime it pulls back, they say, I told you so, but they've had all their money in a cash account since like 89 or something. So don't fall for the idea that every pullback in the stock market, you know, in the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow Jones, whatever it is, or international markets in general, don't fall for the idea that every pullback has to be this doom and gloom situation that is going to take years to recover. While it is certainly a possibility that that could be the case, you should also remember that historically, it seems more likely that it's not the case if history is any indication. That doesn't mean we can't go down further from where we are now. It just means that if we do, it's usually fairly short-lived unless you get a, a very unusual circumstance like what happened, like what we saw back in, in 2008. So I just wanted to, to talk about this. And one of the reasons was also, if you are watching this and you normally are expecting some, some type of crypto uh, stuff, one of the things we can do is we can compare what the NASDAQ has done and compare it to, to Bitcoin. And, and the reason why I think this is useful is because what it, what it will allow us to do is say, look, there are a lot of similarities between these two asset classes. You can see, you can see just how, how similar they are, right? They both experienced a, a fairly nice pullback over the last couple of months. You see, the Na, you see the NASDAQ pulling back up today, Bitcoin's going up with it. So hopefully this provides some unique perspective into the market if you've been 100% crypto. Now I think it's also important that you take a look at what stocks are doing and realize that there is a strong correlation between Bitcoin and what, what stocks are doing. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. We have the premium list at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.